Hello guys, uh, today I'm gonna explain to you how to work with one of your individual verbs uh, which is called uh, intransitive and transitive verbs. Uh, there are some uh, phrasal verbs uh, uh, that are called intransitive. Uh, let me show you some examples on my screen. Yeah, uh, Some uh, phrasal verbs are called intransitive but there are many, a great number of verbs, phrasal verbs, that are called transitive. So let's start from intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs uh, are uh, verbs that don't uh, need an object after the verb, and you cannot put any verb or any, uh, any uh, word or any object between uh, the different parts of the verb. So, uh, in this case, because uh, we know that uh, phrasal verbs consist of a verb and a preposition, so it means, when, when I say different parts of the verb, it means uh, between uh, a verb and a preposition. We cannot use any word. In this case, he grew up in a city. It's like uh, a place. Uh, we cannot put this uh, place uh, in a city between a verb and a preposition so we uh, they all go they go all together he grew up in a city the second ex uh, the second example don't wait out there come in so we cannot say come the room in here is a real object that we cannot put between a verb and a preposition. They again go together, uh, these parts of the uh, phrasal verb, like come and in, come in. You cannot say come the room in. So uh, I gave you only two examples uh, because, as you know, I gave you some copies uh, apart from your uh, textbooks. Uh, and in those copies, you can find Unit 24. It's called Phrasal Verbs, Grammar and Style. Um, there you will find a lot of other examples uh, connected uh, with uh, intransitive verbs. So now uh, let's switch to transitive verbs. Uh, if uh, in terms of intransitive verbs, I, I told you there are some phrasal verbs that are intransitive. Uh, then in case of transitive verbs, we have many transitive verbs in English language. So let's see how they work. Transitive verbs, um, opposite the intransitive verbs, they uh, need a direct object after the verb. Here it's your shoes, uh, and your verb is put on. So you need a direct object after this uh, verb. So you can also place, put your object uh, between the different parts of the verb, like between a verb put and a preposition on. So it works with both cases um, compared to your intransitive one. And uh, the third example is uh, a pr uh, how it works with pronouns. So if we put, uh, if we don't say uh, put your shoes on, we just want to say put them on. So you can easily put a pronoun between a verb and a preposition. But you have to be careful not to use uh, the pr pronoun after the verb. So you cannot use this construction, put on them. The pronoun should always, or I would say must always, uh, play, must be uh, placed between a verb and a preposition. So it works like this. Put on your shoes, direct object after the verb. Put your shoes on, uh, object between uh, different verb parts. And uh, put them on with pronoun. Uh, it works like uh, when you put it uh, between the different parts of the verb, but not after the verb, like, like uh, it's in the first case. Okay, with pronoun, it's different. So that's uh, all for now. Um,
uh, as I told you, you have your unit 24 full of examples and explanations. Uh, after uh, reading that explanation, you can go to the back of uh, the, your paper uh, in the next page. On the next page, you will find uh, some exercise. And uh, let me show you, you have the exercise here. And please complete your exercise like um, number uh, one, two, and three. Your number four is something different. Just uh, pay attention to three of uh, your ex exercise so that you can practice your knowledge with transitive and intransitive. And uh, in terms of your individual work, you have to uh, make a list, like uh, two pages, make a list of intransitive verbs. So you show them that I know these verbs are intransitive uh, according to the rules I uh, explained. And uh, another page is uh, a list of transitive verbs. And uh, don't forget, uh, not only showing them, uh, making a list, but also providing their meanings. So you have to uh, also uh, provide the meanings of what these uh, phrasal verbs mean. Thank you for your attention. Uh, in my next videos, I will provide you with the, uh, with the rest of the individual works uh, and uh, give you instructions on how to work with your uh, individual works. Thank you guys. Bye for now.